Hello everybody, welcome back to the Gary426 channel. We are back at the shop. Yay, back at the shop. Kinda, I mean, I'm not happy about it. Core support for the Beetle is finally done in. Yeah, it's it's been on its way out for a little while now. Yeah, uh, that's not good. Thankfully, there's no damage. Well, I mean, there is a little bit of damage. I mean, you can see the, the bottom of the condenser is bent up, but that's like a little protective shield that's not even part of the uh you know stuff where all the gas goes which is good and this vehicle has been sitting right here for a week now in the exact position it has been and if you haven't noticed there is nothing on the ground so we have no leaks that's awesome so now we need to go ahead and replace the core support which sucks a lot this is our new core support. Picked it up on Amazon. I forgot how much it was, but I'll go ahead and put the link down below. I try to usually go with OEM stuff. The OEM one is, I mean, honestly, for what it is, it's not that expensive. I just rather go with this one because it was cheaper. I mean, I'm gonna end up destroying it again anyways, so got that. Along with a core support, I got all new mounts for the radiator and AC condenser. Two of them are OEM and uh, two of them are Ren, but I mean, they're all made in Germany, so it's not really that big of a deal. Don't mind this stuff. This is for a different video. Maybe the next video, I'll be showing you guys how to rebuild CV joints on the uh, Mark IV Volkswagen. So yeah, this is not really going to be a lot of fun. I have to take the entire front bumper up. There's no way around it. I'm, I'm honestly not even sure exactly how to take it apart, but just by looking at it, I'm already assuming that I'm going to have to take both the headlights out. I'm gonna have to take the wheels off, take the fender liners out, because there's like a couple bolts right up in here. You know, a lot of this is gonna have to come apart. I don't know, it might be easier than I think, but we're gonna go ahead and time lapse it, because that is what we do. I'm gonna set the camera up and do the thing that we always do. Cool. It's kind of funny the things that you don't notice from time to time, like at all, until you have to, you know, deal with the actual item. This bumper has been off before, which is probably why my headlights sit kind of weird in this bucket. I mean, you can see like that's bent. I can't believe I never noticed any of this before. Huh. Well, this bumper's definitely been off at least, at least once. Okay, let me explain real quick. That, I know, is not good. That's because this fender well is not meant for a GLS TDI. This fender wheel just came off of a random beetle. It's supposed to have a little vent right there so that the intercooler right here can breathe. Yeah, I'm gonna cut that up just a little bit more. It kind of self clears I know, I know. Uh, I'm terrible, whatever. That didn't take that long. I think this is actually gonna go by a lot quicker than I think it is and I actually see some stuff under here that I need to remove to you know weight reduction so now I can just go ahead and pull every single screw that I see that holds on this cover yeah Okay, so this is super annoying. There are two screws under here that go like this. There's no real good way to access it. I'm gonna try to get it from under here and go up with this all being loose and hit it with an extension and the impact and see if I could get them out.
parts and things. All the screws that are held on right there, not necessary to take out. Um, you, you don't have to do all that. I did that extra work for no reason. And to detach it all from right here, I mean, it's just, you know, a couple 10 millimeters. There are two T30s down here and just a bunch of T30s all around. This one was missing some hardware. There's a bolt missing here and a bolt missing there. Not surprised. They didn't have a sponge thing right here that the other side did. Someone's been into this, obviously. There's that sponge thing, we don't need that. And this was that thing I was talking about earlier. This is for your air intake. We don't need it. Here's the reason why. One, weight reduction. Two, a thing that Karma TDI taught me is a cheap cold air intake for the system is one, look at how tiny that little hole is. I think it's tiny to pull air out of, especially on a turbo motor. What you do is you detach that and you can see right here, probably not, let me go get a light. And if you look right in here, that hole is about the size of my fist and that is to the air box. It's much, much larger, you know, take a lot more air. It is pretty dirty, so I need to go ahead and change it. That is one downside of it. It will get dirty a lot easier, but hey, you know, it's uh it's a lot better and it's clearly not in its bracket i'm really bad about this stuff guys so that right there is just added weight and so is that so we're getting rid of it because this is my light little go-kart i'm gonna go ahead and reattach all of that stuff because it's gonna be way easier with it out of or off the car and with it back on the car and then i guess we'll go ahead and get back to pulling all this apart this is not taking nowhere near as much time as i thought it would i thought this is going to be a multi-hour process because everybody complains about how the alternator takes like five hours. I guess it's because you have to drain the coolant and all that kind of stuff, but we don't have to do any of that. So yeah, back to it. I'm gonna have to get out the drill because all of these rivets right here need to be drilled out. Um, it looks like I could just punch these and they'll just stay with the metal. Hopefully that's kind of the plan. I'm really hoping it stays with the metal. But yeah, so this piece has to be removed so that we can put it onto the new one. figuring out on it it's uh i recommend re-riveting it i'm not going to but i recommend re-riveting it I already installed the mounts onto the radiator so we can go ahead take that piece and bolt it on up Volkswagen. 
I honestly think it will work for both CV joints. The process should be pretty similar, but it specifically focuses on this. So, besides all that, let's put the damn bumper back on because it has been like two weeks without my car and I really want it back. I know that I took out those rib nuts from here. What I'm doing is there's plenty of room on the back side. I take a 10 millimeter nut, put it on the back, just it right into it. Now we're all good as new. Don't have to replace all those rib nuts. I'm aware for a lot of people that may not be the most popular thing to do, but just letting you know it works. used to tuck in really bad here at the top. I mean, it tucks in a little bit down here at the bottom, but the front bumper ain't 100% on yet either. Whenever I bolt this up, it'll tuck in a little bit more. Cool, that's awesome. That's a problem that I've had for, well, since I've had the car. Sick. Now I got a bunch of billion screws to put in and we're gonna start over there and work our way that way. And the camera's gonna stay still because why does the camera have to move? You know, like, why, why does it have to move? I'm just gonna do a thing. Together. Um, had to do a lot of adjustment on the hood to get it to close. I'll be honest with you guys, just get the OEM one. I'll put a link below where you can get one pretty cheap. I think they're only at most 170 bucks. I don't honest, like, it might be a hundred dollar difference, maybe a forty dollar difference. I don't remember. Uh, I'll, I'll put it down there to say like how much I spent on this part, how much the OEM one would have cost me. I'll be completely honest with you, I think I'd rather get the OEM one because it's definitely stronger and uh, everything lines up right. That, that's the most important part. Uh, and you won't have to drill out that metal piece that we had to do. But besides that, bunks back together. And that is how you take apart front end. Um, you know, you just jack it up, wheels off, um, take the fender liners out, unbolt everything on the fenders, take the headlights out, and then the whole thing will just slide right off. So, in, in one big piece. You don't have to separate them. In all honesty, I think that was extra work that wasn't needed. Uh, but anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you for the first time, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I'll, uh, catch you guys in the next one.